Hey guys, welcome to the Docker series. Docker is a tool designed to create, deploy, and run applications easily by using containers. Don't worry if this sounded too complex. By end of this video, I promise you that the concept of the Docker will be clear to you. So without any further delay, let's get started. Today we will be discussing problem statement that Docker is trying to solve, how Docker solves these problems, Docker overview, and then Docker architecture. Before learning any new technology, first we need to understand the problems we have with the existing approaches and how this new technology solves these problems. With that said, let's start with problem statement one. Let's say we have dev and QA environments. Initially, the developer starts developing the application by installing the required dependencies. Once the application is developed, it gets shipped to the QA environment. To make the application work, we need to install the dependencies required in the QA environment as well. Of course, this is a tedious and time consuming job as you need to install the dependencies in all environments. Let's say this is a Java application and the developer is using Java 8 in his local host and the same has to be installed in the QA environment. Once the application setup is done, the application works great in QA environment. Later, after some days, the developer upgrades the Java version to Java 10 and starts working on a new feature. Once he feels the application is working in his local, he ships the application to the QA environment. But this time, the application will not work as expected as Java is not upgraded in QA environment and QA engineer reports an issue. This is where the most popular debate comes into the picture where developer says, hey, I'm not able to replicate this issue. This is working on my mission. So close this bug. And QA engineer says, I don't care if it is working fine on your mission. We are not going to deliver your mission to the client. So with this problem statement, we can conclude the following issues with the traditional deployment approach. It's time consuming process as you need to make sure all the dependencies are installed. This leads to compatibility issues if we miss any version updates. Also, it's error prone as there are a lot of chances application may break. So what's the solution to this problem? What if there's a way to ship the dependencies along with the application? Is that possible? Yes, that's where Docker comes into the picture. Docker packages the application and the dependencies required to run the application into a single bundle and ship it to the target environment. In Docker world, we call this bundle as image. Now, when we run this image in QA environment, this creates an isolated environment for the application to run by installing all the required packages. And we call this isolated environment a container. This time, the application works fine without any issues as there are no version mismatches. No matter where you run this image, it behaves exactly the same way. Now let's take a look at the problem statement too. Let's say we have three different applications running on the same host. And now we want to isolate these three applications due to security reasons. The immediate solution that we get in our mind is deploying these three applications on three different hosts. This works, but this is not a cost efficient solution and increases the maintenance overhead. The second thought that we get is what if we install three different VMs on a single host? This solution also works, but this is also not an effective solution as VMs take a lot of resources from the host. So how can we solve this problem? Again, this is where Docker comes into the picture. With Docker, we can package these three applications into three different images and run them on a single host. Now, three different containers are created on the same host and are isolated. So now you may think that that's what we are doing with the VMs too, right? Yes, but there are several advantages of using containers over VMs, which are containers are lightweight and smaller in size, whereas VMs take a lot of space. Containers use very few system resources like CPU, RAM, etc. compared to VMs. 
don't worry we will be discussing the differences between vms and containers in detail in the next video of the series now as we understand what problems docker is trying to solve let's try to look at the definition of docker once again docker is a tool designed to create deploy and run applications easily by using containers did it sound simple now i hope so by taking advantage of docker's methodologies for shipping testing and deploying code quickly you can significantly reduce the delay between writing code and running it in production image is a bundle that contains the application along with all the dependencies required when we run this image that creates container which is an isolated environment where our application runs you can compare the images and containers to classes and objects if you are familiar with the object oriented concepts a class is a blueprint that holds the information to create an object and you can create number of similar objects with the same class in the same way images contain the instructions to create a docker container we can create number of containers with the same image docker images are shareable through the container registers like docker hub aws ecr which will be discussed in later videos now let us understand the architecture of the docker engine docker engine is a client server application and used to build and containerize applications this is where we run the docker images to create containers it includes docker server which is a type of long running program called daemon process and used to create and manage docker objects like images containers networks and volumes docker server pulls and pushes the images from the docker registry docker registry is a place where we store images just like we store the code in the github repository there are also private repositories like aws ecr azure registry it also has docker client with which the user can interact with the docker it includes a rest api that specifies the interface that program can use to talk to the daemon and instruct it on what to do docker listens for the docker api request continuously and manages the docker resources based on the request a cli command line interface which uses the docker rest api internally to control or interact with the docker daemon through the scripting or other direct cli commands so to summarize image is a lightweight standalone executable package of software that includes everything needed to run an application it consists the code runtime system tools system libraries and settings images become containers when they run on docker engine here are some advantages of using docker portability once the working application is containerized it can be deployed to any system and applications perform exactly the same way as it did when they are packaged performance as containers have smaller footprints compared to vms applications perform a lot better isolation as containers are isolated there will not be any version conflicts with other applications scalability container can be created quickly if application demands rapid development docker makes the development and deployment easier with the help of images and containers i hope now you understand the fundamentals of docker and how it simplifies the development and deployment my name is pawan iltepu and i thank you very much for watching this video if you liked it please share it with your friends and do not forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any updates